Let's get ready. If you're at home, you may want to find a special place to sit. Or maybe you have a special light you could look at. If you're at school, your teacher may have a special candle for you to look at. Hi everyone, I'm Wendy and this is Sam. Sam, why do you have such a massive grin on your face? Because every time I do a Bible story, I always get so happy and excited. Ah, uh, actually, I don't think today's story is going to make you feel very happy. Oh. Although Easter is a story of hope and of how much God loves us, we do have to listen to some sad and scary bits of the story before we get to the end. But I tell you what, Kira is going to tell us the story, so let's listen. Hey kids, I hope you're all sitting comfortable and that you've got your listening ears on. We're going to pretend that we've got a button just above our ears. If we turn it all the way down like this, then we can't hear anything at all. But if we turn it all the way up, then we can hear everything. So let's try and keep them turned up. Cool. Today, we are going to be looking at the story of Jesus being arrested and then trialled. This basically meant that he was put in front of some powerful people for them to decide whether or not he did a bad thing. That sounds really scary, doesn't it? I wouldn't want to be arrested or stand in front of powerful people. So as we dive into this story, let's try to imagine that we are walking in Jesus' shoes. How do you think that you would feel? This story starts in a place called the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus is with his disciples, and these are kind of like his friends, but they're also people that look up to him and want to learn from him. One of these disciples, called Judas, has just joined them and is plotting to arrest Jesus. He has a secret signal organised with a group of soldiers who are waiting in the shadows. He tells them, When I kiss Jesus... That is your signal to arrest him. Then Judas approaches and kisses his leader, pretending that he loves him. Now Jesus already knows what Judas is planning, and so he says, Do what you have come to do. At this moment, the soldiers come out from the shadows with swords and clubs in their hand. They step forward, grab Jesus, and arrest him in the garden. Although Jesus does not fight back, he's still very angry at the situation. He says to all the people with him in the garden, Why do you feel that you need to come with all these swords and clubs? Am I really that much of a danger? When the disciples hear this, they are scared, and so they run away, leaving Jesus in the hands of the soldiers. Wow! Doesn't that sound super scary? When I was listening to this story, I tried to imagine myself in Jesus' shoes. I think that I would be really angry too. Why should I get in trouble and be trialled for something that I didn't even do, especially by men with swords and clubs? After Jesus had been arrested in the garden, he was taken to the Sanhedrin. Do you remember those powerful people that I was talking about? These are the Sanhedrin. So now you have to imagine that you are Jesus stood in front of all these angry, powerful people who want to see you get in loads of trouble. They are pretty much willing to do anything to see that happen. How do you think you would feel through this part of the story? In front of the Sanhedrin, Jesus was made to stand in front of the high priest. His name was Caiaphas. Caiaphas did not like Jesus at all. This hatred was so deep that he was looking for other powerful people to bring forward false stories about Jesus. Many people did come forward telling stories that weren't true but would get Jesus into a lot of trouble. Fortunately, no real evidence could be given to prove what they were saying. However, the atmosphere changed when two people came forward 
to tell them all something Jesus had said. They said, This man Jesus has said that he could destroy and then rebuild the temple of God in just three days. This made Caiaphas really, really angry. No human could claim to do that. The only way you could do that is if you had powers from God, which Caiaphas didn't believe Jesus had. When this claim was made, Jesus stayed silent. He did not say a single thing. To make Jesus talk, Caiaphas said, Tell me, are you the son of God? Jesus looked at the high priest and said, Well, you have said so. This was a bit cheeky, but also very brave. When Caiaphas heard this, he was so angry that he tore all of his clothes and had evidence that Jesus was claiming to be someone he was not. We all know that Jesus is the Son of God, but in this story, no one wants to believe him. At this very moment, the powerful people start to attack Jesus and a decision is made that he will be put to death. How would you feel if you were Jesus now? I don't think I'd be angry anymore. I would feel really scared and alone. Jesus probably was really scared. He had all these people hurting him. Everyone around him had either left him or hated him and it was all because they did not see that he truly was the Son of God. Here's the thing though, Jesus had a hope. Jesus put full trust in God that whatever was going to happen, he would still be in control. Did you know that you can choose to live life like this as well? It's something that I tried to do. When I seem to be surrounded by lots of bad things or when I feel scared or alone, I give all my worries to God and trust that he has a plan through it all. How would I feel if I'd been in Jesus' shoes that day? In the Bible, it says we can give all our worries to God. What am I worried about? What are you worried about? I'm going to say a prayer, and if you want to, you can say Amen at the end. Jesus, you went through some very scary times. Thank you that you know just how I feel when I'm scared and when I'm worried. Please help me to remember that I can always trust in you. Amen.